afternoon, and welcome to Straight Talking with Kelly, where real conversations happen. This is where you will meet some of the most intelligent, talented, and creative people that are willing to share resources, tips, and knowledge. I am so excited today that I have two incredible, incredible performers with me, um, Sakai Smith and Nikita Germain, aka Les Femmes Fatales. So you'll hear them talk about their musical journeys as singer-songwriters and members of the award Grammy Award winning group Train, and everybody loves them Train. So they'll <laughs> talk about that a little bit as we get into the interview. So before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about them, and then individually I will interview them, and then collectively. So this dynamic, talented duo is a powerful combination of music, glamour, and style. They are songwriters, recording artists, and fierce live performers who enjoy touring and rocking the stage. Singers Nikita and uh, Sakai are also members of the Grammy Award winning group Train. So know that they will talk a little bit more about that and I'm sure they're going to have some surprises for you when they do. So let's get started with Miss Sakai Smith. Before hey, hey. we get into the interview, welcome. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here. I'm so excited. Thank you, Kelly. So Sakai, you know what, before we start your interview questions, let's walk down memory lane for a second. Do you remember how you and I met? Ah, gosh. I know, must have been through Michael Axon, correct? And your husband, Kevin. Okay. So Michael had introduced <laughs> me to Kevin. And then when mm -hmm. you and Kevin started dating, I was like, oh, how cute. And then the next thing I know, they got married. And the next thing I know, they got kids. <laughs> I know. I have, Quite I have a journey. been in this family for a hot second, you know? So it's yes, been Yes, ma'am. It's been beautiful. Um, it has. And we're happy to call you extended family and, and a part of our village. It's, it's such a joy. Uh, you, I remember you making such cute little uh, outfits for our kids and we still have their little painters uh, aprons aprons yes <laughs> yes when they were they little so tiny tots and now I when still I just have them saw them they're taller than me now so Nairobi I is all legs they're both taller <laughs> than me and running track like nobody's business <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes indeed okay so Sakai tell me where were you born and raised Give us a little bit of your background. You know, All right. Well, Bay Area born, raised in the Bay Area, um, Peninsula, Mountain View, grew up many years there as well. Uh, and, um, and it has just been a joy to grow up here in the Bay, you know, with all my fellow musicians and, and uh, I've met so many beautiful people, you know, in the industry growing up here, here in the Bay Area. Uh, but yeah, born in the Bay Area. Uh, my grandmother uh, was the hub, as we call it, right? So spent many, many, many years uh, as a family. Uh, would gather there throughout the years uh, for all the holiday seasons. And um, just I have so many fond memories growing up in Oakland. Um, and uh, right there on 12th Avenue. <laughs> in Oakland and Foothill. And uh, yeah, that, that was the beginning. Uh, me standing in the mirror with my brushes and, and all kind of wonderful things <laughs> taking place. You know, my grandma and my mom bought me a piano and um, that's where the inspiration for writing began. Uh, and uh, just great memories right here in the Bay, Bay Area girl. You were definitely a part of that Bay musical scene, the Bay Area musical scene. <laughs> People know your name, you and Nikita. So now tell me this, Sakai has worked with some of the biggest names uh, like Stevie Wonder, Shaka Khan, Aretha Franklin, Quincy Jones, and even Ceylon, what's her name, Sion? Celine, Celine, Celine Dion. Mm -hmm. Celine Dion. So tell the yes. audience about your involvement with Celine Dion's A New Day record. Well, what a, I'm so like, I, I, I listened to A New Day Has Come and I am actually the lead in voice. I'm the first voice that you hear on the A New Day Has Come. That's, that's me. <laughs> yes, indeed, that is so, beautiful. Yeah, it was, it was a joy to, uh, I worked with 
I, I, can't, I don't want to butcher Walter's last name. I can never get it right. Afanathus. Thank you. So, <laughs> so, I can't pronounce it correctly. I, I, I don't do it justice, but um, he produced that track for her over in Marin when he was here in the Bay Area. He worked with Donna a lot, Walter. Um, Afanathus. That's probably not correct. I'm sorry, Walter. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I went over to do the session and um, and I, I, uh, I ended up doing the lead in part into the song. So that makes me happy every time I hear that song. That is beautiful. Now, <laughs> what types of jobs did you hold before you were able to do your, your work full time to be a performer? Ooh, hey man, hey man, the Jamaican man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. No, for real though. Okay, so um, as I uh, started my career, my very first uh, tour was with Tremaine Hawkins, okay? So then that, uh, that was fall touring and I was planning for a summer wedding, my first marriage. Um, and I uh, ended up having children. So music was in my soul, but I decided to, to kind of leave the career as a full time and get into just you know mothering and being a wife. I didn't I didn't at that time think I could balance it all. And uh, so once I got married, um, I got a job. I got a, a nine to fiver, but it was just such a wonderful thing. Um, I worked with AAA for many years. They were so supportive, though. So music was so deeply part of me and rooted in me um I felt sad I felt there is a very sad place um and um the marriage didn't work out I was encouraged by my mom to go back what I'm here to do on this planet and that was music so for me I was doing a few sessions here and there but um when when all of that happened in my life I made phone calls and it wasn't like out of sight, out of mind. It was like, girl, thank you. Where have you been? We want you to do sessions. It was such a blessing. It was like the gates of heaven just opened up for me when I went back to what I was supposed to be doing on this planet. And um, so I worked, I did my nine to five. I was in a, a cover band with uh, Larry Batiste, Nikita Germain, Margie Leo. I mean, we had just a great group of musicians that, were a part of that. So I did that. I did session work. I was doing everything to not only maintain my little family. I had three children that were depending on me for everything. And fortunately, my mom came in to help me so that I could change the way that I was viewing everything. And that would be pursuing my career. Yes. It, I couldn't do it full time. But um, so I, I, um, I worked at AAA kind of like an all round girl. I worked in the the DMV department, I did uh, uh, customer service around, I was an assistant to management at one point. I mean, there was a few things that I did and um, I started out uh, answering all their phones. When <laughs> my first, my eldest was a, it was a, he was like 13 months old when I went back, um, when I went into the work and fill at AAA. So I did that and I just kind of juggled it all with the mindset of when I got out of that relationship, I knew that the goal was to be doing what I needed to do. So however that took place, um, that's what I did. And I juggled it all. Even when I, um, I, uh, I did a autobiographical play with Patty Austin for a few months, they allowed me, I went in part-time though. I went in part-time, I started full-time and then after I had my, my third child, um, I went in, uh, this is when divorce was happening. And so I, I was off with her at the beginning. And then I knew that I needed to get back to work. So I went back part-time and my mindset was strictly like music, come, come. And that's when I was telling you, I made all those calls and it was just such a beautiful experience to jump back into music. But I was still, took a little while for me to get into music full-time. And if you want to talk about that, I can. Well, you know what? I, the reason why I ask that question, because I think it's important for aspiring performers to know it doesn't happen overnight. Mm. 
And so when they get to hear that, oh my gosh, she had a job, <laughs> you know, it, it, it really helps. Absolutely. Now, the, other, the other thing I have for you is that I remember you telling me that Clay Tobin was your interest. Clay Tobin, Clay Tobin Richardson was your entry into the music industry. Could you elaborate mm -hmm. a little bit more on that for me? Sure, absolutely. Um, okay, so when I got into um, uh, session work, uh, Clay Tobin, um, I met Clay and Clay, uh, I met him actually during this time of, uh, there was a company with Carlos, Lovejoy Records. I met him during that time. And um, I forget how I met Jimmy, but uh, Clay was there. Clay loved my voice. And I got a chance to work on two records. One was with Chaz and one was with Jane Green. Okay. So, but, uh, so, you know, I was getting my feet wet, but Clay was the impetus for me to really get into the session uh, work. He took me under his wing. I would go with him on sessions and watch him, Vicki Randall, uh, Annie Stocking, do these sessions and I was like oh my god that's what I want to do <laughs> you know and um and and he introduced me to Narda I mean so there were there were he was he was really like a really great mentor for me it really a lot came through my, the beginnings of my professional uh career as a recording artist uh started with 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 Clay Tovin. I, I remember when you gave me a copy of your CD, Dream Big, mm -hmm. uh, I fell in love with the song I like. <laughs> it remind, you remind, your voice was very soft and so sweet. I said, is it Janet Jackson? And then the <laughs> I, I heard it. I said, no, she's a little stronger. So that's a beautiful song. So thank you. Uh, what was the reaction when you heard the completed project? And then it was out there for the ethers, for people to... to, to wow. Play. It was really um, such a surreal moment for me because uh, over the years, uh, by the time I did Dream Big, Kevin and I had, were married at that time and two more kids. So we have a total of five kids we, we raising, but um, it, and he, we recorded that basically uh, most of that was recorded where we live now in our studio downstairs. A lot of Dream Big was recorded in that studio. And to hear it completed, uh, to see it, to touch it, to feel it, and then to hear it on the radio, I mean, it was so, <laughs> it was just wonderful. It was so wonderful. Um, and that's still one of my favorites, you know, and it, and it translated really well live as well, performing it live. You know, it was one of those sweet songs. So, you know, it had to have a little bit of texture and, and hold back. I had to hold back a little bit on that. And vibey, it was very vibey. But it was just so beautiful, Kelly, to actually, that was actually our second record. I don't know if you know that. Ain't No Miracle was first, right? We did. I mean, I don't, yeah, I we did. Get that one. Okay, well, I got to get you that one. Yeah. That was done first. But Dream Big was, I think, really um, very special because um, it, I had evolved as an artist. You know, you always re are evolving as you record. And I had so many wonderful things to talk about. I think Ain't No Miracle, um, it was a lot of pain in that. And so uh, it was nice to transition into, it had some, you know, it had, it had some flavor on it. Um, you know, I was talking about some life issues in Dream Big, uh, but there was so much beauty in it as well. And so for me, that was, that was awesome. That was really amazing. So now we're getting ready to Miss Nikita. Nikita, you're me. Yes. Nikita, it's definitely finally a pleasure for me to meet you. I feel like I know you because I'm traveling with you guys with train. Oh, <laughs> okay. 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 Well, it's a pleasure meeting you for sure. <laughs> so, Nikita, tell me a little bit about your background. I understand you're a Bay Area native. I am. I am. I'm from Oakland, California born and raised. I'm the youngest of, um, my mother had nine children. I have two 
older sisters who's no longer with us now, but by my father's first marriage. Um, I've been singing since I was a little girl. You let my sisters them tell it, you know, <laughs> you know, through the house, running through the house singing. Um, first talent show when I was like, I think I was like nine, I think nine. I was uh, at my elementary school, my first talent show, uh, when I first sang, did a song by myself in front of a whole lot of people. And my mother and one of her coworkers came to the show, to the performance, and I did a song, and we get we laugh about it now. <laughs> I don't know if you remember Millie Collier. Ever heard of her, Millie Collier? I had a talk with my man last night. That's the song I sang a cappella <laughs> at nine years old. <laughs> That was a grown up song. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny now, but that's what I did. And then as I got older, of course, I, you know, continued singing and, you know, being in um, talent shows. And um, then as I got older, singing throughout the Bay Area, you know, uh, in different clubs, uh, uh, Jeffrey Pete um, at the time had Doc of the Bay. And he was the first. Uh, club owner that gave me my first gig, paying gig in clubs, you know, and, but let me backtrack before that I was um, married college. I went to married college after I graduated from high school, I went to LA, came back to the Bay Area, went to married college, joined the Traveling Voices with Jackie Harrison and how I, and I used to do a little show, you know, I did a showcase that was one of our assignments was to do a showcase. And I was at Jeffrey's club at Dock of the Bay in Berkeley. And after that, you know, um, he gave me my first gig, you know, paying, you know, paying gig there. And from there, I started singing throughout the Bay Area, different clubs, Ivy's. If you remember Ivy's back in the day. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> his well, lordship. You, you just answered all of the questions that I was going to ask you. Because <laughs> I, I, I saw where you went to, 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 uh, to uh, Merritt College where you studied music and at yeah. San Francisco State University. Yeah. What led to that decision for you to go to school and to, and to take those on as your music on as your major? Because music, that's what I did. I, you know, music, I've always, I always wanted to be a singer. I thought I wanted to be a, a, a teacher, right? Then I was like, no, I, I like to sing. So, and I thought that would help me as far as going to San Francisco State. I took some classes like um, classical music, so I could, you know, I had to sing classical, you know, music. So that helped with that training. I had that training over there. Um, and then just singing at um, Merritt College with the choir, it allowed me to uh, learn how to sing with other people, you know, to blend. It helped with all that. So that was very helpful to me, you know. Um, and I didn't, so I didn't get a degree or anything, but it, the training was very um, important for me. You know, and then you know I took what? some private lessons outside of school as well. And that's why I wanted that question for the audience to hear, because whether you graduate or not, it's not even important, but it's like what you said, you got the lesson. Yeah. There was, you know, and you, you were able to take what you did learn and that's just perfecting your craft. That's what mm -hmm. you did. Yeah. So I commend you for that. That's beautiful. Then my other question that you led into was I saw that, you know, to to really get your feet wet, you started taking yourself out, booking yourself into all of these different clubs. Yeah. What were some of the lessons that were learned from that process of being, you know, uh, um, a, a singer in, in the different clubs and booking yourself and then finally coming through that? So if, if someone was to do that right now, what would you tell them the pros and the cons are? Well, at the time when I started that, I was married at the time and my husband at the time was actually booking my gigs. Um, okay. but the, yeah, Stephen Houston. Okay. Um, um, it was a great experience as far as, you know, learning how to, you know, ask for what you want, you know, learning far business side of it first, you know, don't just, you know, at that time, you know, you don't get paid a lot of money, but you, you know, you, you have a band, so you gotta make sure everybody's taken care of and nicely where they would want to come back and play for you. You know, don't give them, you know, just anything. You don't give them, you can't pay them what they're worth, but they understand that, you know, give them enough to, where they want to come back and work with you. And you have to be professional with everybody, you know, be on time, you know, owners, they appreciate that. Being on time at the gig, doing your show, um, uh, uh, have your set together 
as far as your material for the musicians and making sure everybody's in place. And just, you know, and I learned that from watching other people uh, before me going to clubs before I can really get into clubs. I was kind of sneaking, you know, watching other people. <laughs> so, um, so I just learned, learned how to be professional, you know, because you don't, you don't want to burn bridges with people when you work with them, you know? So that's very, very important when you, somebody will call you back and say, can you come, you know, when people start asking for you to come to their place, you know? So yeah. You build up that reputation and yes. uh, taking care that's of, yeah, building up a positive presentation and then taking care of your band members. So key. I'm so glad you said yeah. that. Yeah. Because it's this is loyalty, it's fair. Yeah. And it just shows that, you know, we're all in this together. Yeah, right. So you, you couldn't you people. couldn't sing without them. Right. Because you have to treat people like you want to be treated. So and that's important. Exactly. You know, exactly. that's very important. Because this music business is is not easy. You know, mm -hmm. you you know, love it, but it's not easy. Yeah. You know, so so now, Nikita, your career took off when you were introduced to Nardo Michael Walden. So yeah. could you tell our listeners a little bit about him, what that was like working with him, oh, and yeah. the slew of incredible artists that you got to work with because of that? Yeah, well, I met him at 85. Uh, a friend of my husband, I knew him, but he was more of a friend of my husband at that time. His name was London. I think that was his name, London. He introduced, he brought us to the Nardis camp back then. And I remember walking into the studio and I guess he had prearranged everything. He not knew I was coming. And, but when he came from the back of the studio, it was like, hey, Nikki, like he'd been knowing me forever. <laughs> you know? Now, and, Nikki, can you do me a favor? Now you got me calling you Nikki. So can you actually, <laughs> can, you tell, can, can you tell people who Narda Michael Walden is? because some of our audience may not be familiar with just the name, but yeah. they know his work. Yes, well, first of all, you know, he's a one hell of a drummer <laughs> slash one hell of a producer, <laughs> songwriter, <laughs> right? Singer um, and a wonderful person. Um, that's who Narda is, who's written and produced so many wonderful artists, um, in the industry. That's who he is. And when I first met him, when I went in the studio, I knew I was going to go in there singing, but I didn't know I was going to be singing background on Aretha Franklin's Who's Zoom and Who album. Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> what a way to start. There. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Right. And it was Jeannie Tracy was there, Preston Glass, who I, um, I'm sorry, guys, it's been so long ago, but it was so many wonderful people. And I want to say, I want to say Sylvester at the time was there. I think he was in the studio that, that day. So it was just, it was, I was just, you know, I'm young. I was younger and it was just like, <laughs> I'm in awe. <laughs> I'm in the studio with this fantastic producer, these wonderful people, you know, meeting them for the first time, you know. Um, so it was a great experience. And then um, that, was the, that was the first time I worked with Narda in 85. And then that was the first and last time Years went by after that. I, you know, that was it until 93. I got a phone call out the blue and it was a young lady from his camp and it was uh, Sal Dakota. We've been looking for you all over for you. They didn't, you know, I was like, I disappeared. I guess they thought, but somebody <laughs> gave my number and they asked, was I available to come into the studio, do some session, session work? And I've been working with him ever since then, you know, on and off, you know. Uh, yeah, doing working with did background for uh, on uh, sessions with for uh, Shanice Wilson and uh, Tevin Campbell. Um, who else? Uh, oh God, uh, 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 Lou Rawls. Uh, uh, God, it's, it's just so many. <laughs> it's just so it's many. So wonderful. It's wonderful. Cool. I'm I'm looking at you. Just you you lit up just talking about it. So you yeah. can tell. Yeah, it's, it's it was a, a lot of people. I believe, we, uh, well, I think, were you on a session with James Brown, Sakai? This in background with James Brown? I think so. Yeah, I think yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. The yeah. sound, oh, the soundtrack for um, Alita Adams for that movie. Yes, we did that. Um, yeah, and then I had mm -hmm. the pleasure, well, of doing, I had wrote a song and it was called Take Me Higher. I let Narda hear it in his office. He liked the hook. 
so much where the song became Dinah Ross' song, Take Me Higher, her song um, that she sang at the Super Bowl one year. So that's my hook that I created. So I'm co-writer on that song. <laughs> but, uh, so that was a pleasure. You know what the funny thing about you, Nikita, you always answer my questions before I get to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh okay, <laughs> this girl is jumping ahead of me. So you, you come sit in my seat. And I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I, I was going to actually talk to you where you said at some point you were actually on the Motown label uh, yourself yes. uh, with your yes. own album, uh, As yes. Sweet As It Comes. Yes. And then, you know, you ended up co-writing that song with Narda. So talk about your experience on the Motown label. Well, oh, that was awesome. Um, and I wrote, a, I uh, met this young lady. I was doing a session at Narda's studio and, and this young lady named Delena was in the studio with us. And she had a song she let myself, and I think it was Tony Lindsay at the time, Tony Lindsay was there, hear the song. And the song was so beautiful. I said, oh, I would love to sing this song. And I asked her if I can record it because I was, I'm getting ready to go to Atlanta to, uh, to a music conference called Jack the Rapper. And I needed a song. Remember Jack the Rapper? I remember okay. Jack the Rapper. Yeah. And so, um, did the song, she let me do the song, I recorded it. My husband at the time and I flew to, to Atlanta to Jack the Rapper, um, was there, we was, at, one of the days we was there, we sit at a table with myself, my ex-husband, Derek Hughes. And then this lady comes to the table that Derek knew, her name was Iris Gordy, who was Barry Gordy's niece. And he introduced us. I gave her a packet, my packet, by the time, I got home, back home to the Bay Area, checked my voicemail. Hi, hi, Nikita. I, I think she called me Nikki, actually. <laughs> this is Iris Gordy. You know, gonna, you know, give me a call back. So I, I'm up like, ah, what? You know, so <laughs> ended up calling her back and she was saying that she was coming to the Bay Area to, um, and she wanted to, you know, what was I doing? And at the time I was singing at Jeffrey Peace Club that was on second and Broadway at the time, um, right? So she came, her and some affiliates came to see me perform and Derek Hughes and I was singing together at that club at the time. And moving fast forward, um, they ended up signing me, she ended up signing me to uh, Barry Gordy's record production, which signed me to Motown. So that's how that came about. <laughs> Baby, yay. Yeah. You know, Barry mm. Gordy is my idol girl. So to have that, I was so excited <laughs> and thrilled for yeah. you. That is beautiful. Yeah, um, that was Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I so said that was just an awesome time, you know, when that happened. <laughs> Very exciting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, um, now what I would actually like to do, guys, is to interview you guys collectively. So we can All talk right. about Les Femme Fatales <laughs> and your, your work with Train. Yeah. So, um, Tell me how you guys connected, how you guys got to know each other, and then how you start working with Train, and then what you guys are doing now. But we're going to go slow. So first, let's just talk about how you guys met, because you guys have a 30-year-like relationship, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Over 30 okay. years. <laughs> yeah. So I'll well, let I'll, Nikita tell such a great story. So I'll let her <laughs> tell that part, how we met. Okay. Well, at the time, I was at Merritt College and Traveling Voices. And we had the pleasure of going to um, this church called Church by the Side of the Road in Berkeley. And this, um, we had to go there to critique uh, these singers, young artists. And I forgot the name of the program, Sakai, that you were um, a part of. Well, uh, we, Victoria and I, Victoria Thea and I were part of the UC Berkeley program, the Young Musicians program. So yes, we were in so that together. Yes, mm -hmm. so we had to go there to listen to this art, these artists sing. I think so. We, but I, oh, excuse me, Nick. I think that was like Jabberwock, but oh, okay. Victoria and I, something like that. Something, it wasn't directly through the um, program at UC Berkeley, but it was, Victoria and I did, I, I did that with her. This, yeah. whatever this show was. Yeah, right. but yeah, that we were there. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, so we go, we get there and we're in a circle, They're perform they start performing. Victoria Theater start playing the piano. Then this young, beautiful young, they're both beautiful. But then when Sakai opened her mouth and started <laughs> singing, 
I don't know about everybody else, <laughs> I'm sure, and I probably, they probably would agree with me. I was blown away hearing her 15, a 15 year old, they were both 15 at the time. And I was like, wow, in my mind, I'm thinking, damn. <laughs> you sound that good. And, huh? like, and what I was thinking was, she sounded, your tone to me reminded me of Phyllis Hyman, just rich and, and just, you know, she had this big voice, but controlled. And she was singing this beautiful song, I'm gonna make it. And I was like, oh my God. And I was like, oh, I love, I love how she sounds. I love this song. And again, here we got this young artist who wrote this song. I'm asking, can I sing your song in my show? <laughs> <laughs> and I was singing at Jeffrey Peace Club, Dr. Bay at the time. But that's when I first met Sakai. That, that day. That's when I first right. met, her. met her. And then I met her again. Did I think, was that the show I, you did start, I hired you to sing? Uh, that was a few that years song? later. Few that years was a few later. years okay. later. Okay. We, but yeah. that's when we when... first met. Yeah. But then we got yes. to know each other some years later because she was working uh, with, um, at the, at the uh, beauty supply. One Stop hair, Cosmetic. Uh, one Stop Cosmetic <laughs> hair salon slash beauty, sal beauty uh, supply house where my, um, ex-husband was working doing hair and, and I saw her there I was like oh I know her <laughs> right so it was just a, a small world you know, how we came yeah. together and auditioned know, for the new traveling voices exactly right mm -hmm. right <laughs> so guys yeah. tell me what is it like being with train and what's the life like being on the road because you guys with train you guys traveled all over the world so what what is what was that like what are some of the pros and what are some of the cons and how did you guys not pull each other's teeth out did you guys get along all the time <laughs> well you know Absolutely. what yeah can i let me just say for my i can speak for myself and i, I and i think you too sakai but for me it was just a cherry on the top being on the road with Sakai, who I love, you know, to the moon and stars, and we get along. You know, nobody get along, you know, to the point where every day you have, you, you don't agree on everything, but it's it's okay to agree to disagree, you know, and we love each other enough to realize that, and we get along and we choose to love each other and laugh. We laugh so much <laughs> on the road. We have such a great time. <laughs> yeah. We like a lot of the same things. I think that's... Mm -hmm you know, that helps mm -hmm. and we respect one another. Yes. You know, that's important. Absolutely. And we know the importance of friendship and love. All, all that to me plays a part and she's consistent. That's that's very important to me and a person, how consistent they are in their, who they, as, in who they are. And that's, then that's her Aww, from the time I Nick. met her, from the time I ever met her. So that's Thank helps. you. Oh, yes. I think she's beautiful. And I, and and I and feel, oh. <laughs> She's my sister. She's my big love fist. fest. This is the nice love fest. So, so, so what was it? What's it's, like real talk. it's real talk. It's real talk. <laughs> it, it really is. Uh, and it is absolutely not for everybody. It's mm -hmm. grueling. It oh, truly yeah. is. Um, we love it. Um, I know that's what I'm meant to do. And, and but uh, in all honesty, for me, um, uh, having young kids at the time, we've been with train for almost nine years coming up. My babies were tiny tots. Oh yeah. And a lot of sacrifices that you make, um, along the way. However, uh, the balance of it all, um, sometimes the mommy get will come through, but understanding that I'm also encouraging my children to live their dreams, to show them that you can right. have a balanced life and you create what's normal for you. My husband and my family and I, we created whatever's normal, work the new normal for us, me being out on the road and switching roles. And these kids were doing amazing. Our first year out with train in 2012, I think Keto, you can agree, was the most grueling year. We did like 56 <laughs> yeah. shows in a row. Yeah. And um and, uh, you know, it's like we, you learn it. You learn how to do it really quickly, okay? Yeah. What it you feels like. And, and living with, with uh, you know, other band members, li mm -hmm. literally on a bus. And we have so much love for each other and respect for each other. Uh, our brother, our trained family, they're generally like, really like our brothers. I mean, literally, um, 
uh, you know, it's it's such a it's a joy to be out on the road. Yeah. Um, with Look if we had to, to choose people, <laughs> I would choose them. You I know, it's not them. a lot of drama. It's uh, it's just uh, you know, we get our work done and we have a lot of fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think, we but it helps family. too. I think too because every, everybody are have have a family. They married, have families, or they're not married, but they have a family, and family is important to them you know, which helps a lot, you know, mm -hmm. so it really, yeah. Helps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I knew, I knew Pat, uh, I actually met Pat, uh, back in 2007 and my kids were like 13 months old. The twins were the youngest of five were 13 months. And we, I, I auditioned for him and I went out with him on his solo tour. That's how we first met. And then in 2012, he called me and asked, he said, Sakai, do you think Kev would mind if you come out with us for the summer? And I was like, well, let me check in, check in, you know, <laughs> so because he really loves Kevin, you know. And so he um, so that it was supposed to be a summer thing. And Nikita and I recorded had recorded on uh, the Save Me San Francisco album. We did like three. This was this was back in 2009 after I had gone out with Pat. He called me in. We did the session over here in San Francisco. And he wanted another vocalist. So I called Keita for that. And we did the session. And then in 2012, he said, do you know anybody else? Because I want two girls. And I said, do you remember Nikita? She did the session with us. He said, oh, yeah, see if she wants to go. Well, Miss Thing was getting ready to go to Japan, you know, with Narda um, on, tour, on a tour. And I called, I called when I called her. Um, and I said, you know, it's a great opportunity. You know, it's a summer thing, you know, and it might be really great. And so uh, she said, you know, she checked in and, and, uh, and she said, yes. So we prepared, we went to Vegas and auditioned. And before this, be we started singing before their show, it was a private and they were like, you want to do this? We, we'd love for you to do it, you know? And they wanted us to uh, start and go to, um, I think it was like uh, Australia, Malaysia, they were doing this, going to do this tour before they tour the U.S. And I was like, well, oh, my God, that's the date I'm supposed to be singing in my kids' school. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm like, OK, you know, I don't I don't like to be messing with things like I don't burn bridges. Right. But anyway, we, we had a laugh about it because uh, um, it was also Nikita's birthday. And um, and Pat was like, girl, Australia. I was like, OK, 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 I'll go, I'll go. <laughs> and so that was the beginning we uh we did that first summer tour it was amazing and wonderful yeah. and grueling and uh, and all of those things it was but awesome. um awesome. it was awesome awesome yeah. and then mm -hmm. we went uh we went into 2000 the end of that tour management asked us if we would extend um our stay through 2013 and then the summer of 2000, we did a lot of privates. We worked, worked, worked. Um, yeah. A lot of privates throughout that year. In the summer, at the end of the summer tour, they asked us to become band members. Yeah. So we became official band members of Train, yeah. which is history in itself. Because yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. That, yeah. that speaks highly of you guys. That's that's amazing. Yeah. It, it absolutely. Yeah. Amazing. Yes. All right, guys. So now I want you guys to talk about your award-winning song, Is It Enough? <laughs> And the meaning behind it. Okay. All well, right. <laughs> well, um, at the peak of the pandemic, that's how this song came to life. Um, I was at home. I was actually I had moved from Nevada to get back to California, and I was at my daughter's. And I, I, I was at home. I just happened to be at the house alone. And I was looking at CNN because everybody was looking at the news. I was, I mean, I was just glued to the TV about what's going on, what's happening. You know, can't go outside. And so I'm, I'm looking at the news and seeing how crazy it was and how a lot of people wasn't taking it seriously. You know, our president at the time was acting cuckoo for Coca Puffs, and it was just crazy. So, and I was sitting there frustrated, and I was. I was a little pissed because I couldn't believe people were walking around with no mask on or just wasn't taking it serious. And I just remember getting up and I was going to the back room for something and I stopped in my tracks. Mind you, I wasn't trying to write a song. I wasn't thinking about a song, but this melody came to me and these words liter literally came out my mouth. It's not enough to live. It's not enough to cry. 
And I stopped, I literally stopped. And I said, and I sang it again. I just, I just kept singing it over because I just liked the way it sound. And it, cause that's how I was feeling. You know, I guess in my subconscious, I was feeling that. It just was, but it came out my mouth. I started singing it. Then I went back, I just went back to the couch and I started singing it in my phone, in my recorder and got some paper for it. I started writing. I had a verse and a, and a pre-course, like a pre-course and a chorus. And I said, oh my God, this is a song. So I called Sakai cause I was so excited. And I called, I called her and told, and sang it to her. I said, you gotta help me finish this song. And we wrote, finished writing the song together. And then we let Kevin hear the song and he liked it. We made some adjustments to, you know, just to, to, to complete the song, to make it more universal. Cause I know that's how I felt. I, I was sure other people was feeling how I was feeling in, with the words that was written, I wrote, you know, but we wanted to make it more universal too, as well. And that's what people hear today. Is that enough? It was titled, um, uh, it's not enough. It's not, is that enough? No, right, it's, is that enough? And we changed it to question it, mark. Is that what? enough? It was called, it's not it's, enough. And then we switched enough. to, is it, is, is that, that enough? enough? Question mark, is that so, enough? Yeah, right. question yes. mark, is mm -hmm. that enough? So yes. people could look inwardly and yes. take accountability as opposed to yes. blaming like, or, you know, mm -hmm. pointing or fingers. Finger or, yeah. you know, and, and and in regards to that, I, I went in my mind, I wasn't thinking, it, it was, you know, um, writing it that it was, you know, I was just, uh, you know, just frustrated. It was more of a frustration of what I was right. seeing that being done. People wasn't doing enough. You know, mm -hmm, there was people mm -hmm. who were, but there's a lot of people just watching the news. They weren't. It's like, wow, mm -hmm. are they serious? Mm -hmm. You know, but I like how it, it, it turned out. You know, it's a beautiful song, I think. And I think people, when they hear it, they get it. You know, it makes them look at, yeah, am I doing enough? You know? Right. What are some of the other projects you guys are working on? Oh, wow. Well, we just wrapped <laughs> up uh, a new song. Um, mm -hmm. it's called sleeping with the rock star. Ooh, hoo, hoo. <laughs> we just wrapped up the video. It is so fun. It's such a That's great beautiful. song. Um, it's all about empowerment yeah. and you are the rock star at yeah. the end of the day, you are the rock yeah. star. And, and, uh, so we had a lot of fun, uh, recording it and, um, we, uh, we, like I said, we just wrapped up the video, uh, about a month ago three weeks ago yeah. or something like uh -huh. that, wrapped it up and got the video back. So we are uh, anticipating releasing it very soon. Um, yeah. There's some other things that we're working on. So we're gonna um, just hold off just a little bit until we finalize a few things with some other projects that we're doing. And uh, we're excited, yeah. you know, some projects about, that are looking. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I was gonna say some, some projects that um, may, be really great for is that enough so we want to you know give give it our full attention is that enough and then we're going to release uh rockstar and we got some other stuff too yeah this project is so fun <laughs> it's it's you, you kind of count it as our alter ego you yeah. know right <laughs> that's good <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that's <laughs> and good. It's, you know we are like you know it's it's fashion it's fun it's um it is about being authentic in 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 and uh, loving who you are and your skin and yeah. and just owning it, you know, yeah. and, and being think, fierce. Right, and, and then and then to using your be, use your imagination. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, this mm -hmm. be open to your, your using your imagination. Mm -hmm. of, of yeah. anything's possible. Anything's possible. <laughs> Anything is possible, and we are living proof. Yeah. We are living proof. We are still yeah. doing this 30 years later. We are living yeah. our dreams. Mm -hmm. And that, um, it's so beautiful to have this uh, connection to, uh, with Nikita um, as a sister and a friend. But the fact that we have literally uh, experienced so many of our career highs together, you know, mm -hmm. um, is incredible. And yeah. I would do it all over again. If yeah. I had one person to choose, it would be Nikita Germain. Oh, because we've seen yeah. each other go, I mean, really, from, from when we started from the beginning, from being married to having children, you know, now I'm a grandmother, I have, I have a daughter, she's us. And that's another thing would made it easy for me too. When I was in Motown, my daughter was very young 
and my parents who was living at the time, they was very helpful and instrumental and, in, you know, taking care of her while my husband and I traveled at the time, you know, doing that kind of thing. And then now she's be able to train. She's an adult. She has her own family. So that made it easy for me to do train. But it was hard for my girl because her babies were so young at the time. Yeah. You know? And my daughter was transitioning to college. Yeah. My son was transitioning to UCLA. He had finished. He, he did his prereqs at G, uh, JC and then he was finishing at UCLA. So but God has so that those things were happening. Those transitioning, yeah. uh, that transitioning period was it was such a um it was a painful period, but it was also just so beautiful yeah, at the same yeah, time to, to see my children flourishing and, um, and, uh, and yeah. And then also to, you know, now uh, allow us to, you know, take our careers to a new level. It was just really beautiful. And to, also yeah. I have to give my husband a hundred percent credit because I could not do this without him. Okay. Saying girl, do it. And yeah. I'm here. He is my yeah. biggest fan and supporter. And so we are quite a team, yeah. you know, and we, uh, we, uh, uh, we, we do this, we do this together and we, we are still creating music together and it's yeah. really beautiful. So, so beautiful. he, I have to say that he, I have to give Kevin, uh, his props. He took 60 voices from different devices, put all those voices together to sound like one choir. Um, and you'd never know. Yeah. So what you hear, that video that you see, he produced that video himself. Yeah. Is that he enough? He spent, <laughs> yes, is that quite right? And he spent countless, it was months, I tell you, day and night, getting that work, putting all that love in those video, in that video and the song. And so many, we have to say thank you to our musical family all yes. over the nation yeah. who said yeah. yes to yeah. doing the video with us everybody said yes we were just so grateful and humble Very great. yes. by um you know all the wonderful as you know kelly just uh bay area greats yes. heavyweight said yes and so they just brought everybody just, brought their a game <laughs> they did. It, was, it, was, it was beautiful it really is that's nice so, you know what I, I like i said i am so honored to have you guys here now my big question is and you guys can take tag turns going back and forth with who were some of your inspirations well for me and that doesn't have to be musical inspiration just your inspirations okay. in yeah. general um well i'm just gonna say musically first um i'm gonna say gladys knight was my inspiration growing up as a kid listening to her i, I just love that neither one of us album i think i played it out um listening to al green and you know uh um then the jazz, I love jazz because I sing jazz as well. You know, listen to the Nancy Wilson because my father loved Nancy Wilson. So we played that, that was played a lot in the house. And Dinah Washington, who I, my mother loved, I loved her voice, and Sarah Vaughn. But as far as um, my inspiration, my parents, because they just taught me, you know, you know, to be who you are, love what you do and just, you know, go for what you wanted, you know, in life. And my mother was a strong uh, woman as far as just who she was. She was consistent, <laughs> didn't pull no punches, you know? And I, I see the older I get, I, you know, I become more like her and, you know, just, you know, not to say taking nothing away from nobody else, but, or disrespecting anybody, but love you first love learn love learn to love me first then i can love somebody else and my father embedded in me treat people like you want to be treated i think that's just you know just the most important thing you can learn in life in golden dealing, rule. yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's golden rule uh, for sure yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah well for me are you finished nick I'm yes sure. yeah mm -hmm. um Growing up, uh, I was fortunate to have um, my stepsister, Patrice Banks, uh, was in uh, Grand Central Station. So she was definitely one of my first influences in, the, in, in terms of like going to their shows and like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. But uh, one of my favorite musical uh, performers was Natalie Cole. And 
Uh, I did. I got love on my mind from my fifth grade <laughs> talent show. Got a standing ovation. Okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh. But before that, I was bl- I was singing. I was singing. Um, I got love on my mind, and my mom was like, "Girl, if you don't be quiet," like she was like, <laughs> she was that person. And then I sang "Change." I joined the church choir, and I sang Tremaine's "Change" in the choir, and she was like okay 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 we take it I, I, okay okay but you know I was like she was like for a while like girlfriend please you know <laughs> but, but um Natalie Cole I love Denise Williams oh, I yeah. love Minnie Ripperton I oh. love Earth Wind and Fire oh I would play oh. that wreck I would play live the live album oh, yeah. over and over and over <laughs> I mean I was like that kid my mom loved music too and uh, but I would I would take those records and I just play them over and over. Um, Chaka Khan, oh, played her. Who over didn't love Chaka over, Khan? Right, <laughs> exactly. over and over and over again. Oh, that's so, everybody's house. <laughs> yes. So growing up, um, those were like really, and Stevie Wonder, of course. Oh, yeah. Like Michael Jackson. Um, those were like musical, uh, my musical inspiration. But of course, I, I would have to say my mom, she sacrificed, she took me to auditions, she, you know, um, made sure I got to wherever I needed to go on time. She, she had me in lessons, she was the impetus for me getting in the uh, Young Musicians program. I mean, they were just like, she sacrificed a lot for me. Um, and, um, and I'm just so glad that she has gotten the opportunity to watch my career grow. It's just, mm-hmm. it really just, it's so precious. She's been through a lot, um, but she's still here. And, yes, yes. Um, and I'm just so grateful. Um, come, you know, and my dad, my dad was, uh, he played every instrument by ear. He could pick up anything wow. and he was wow. a great vocalist. So I got a lot of that from him. Now my mom, don't don't get in trouble don't let me get in trouble now but <laughs> she didn't you know her family she I mean there's a lot of musical talent in that side of the family but um my uh my gift a lot of that uh I think my dad poured a lot of that in me so <laughs> yeah. so but yeah yeah and Tremaine I love Tremaine Hawkins and yeah it was such uh you talk about not being in the mindset of just loving something so much and then years later mm-hmm. manifested in my life she was really the the first artist that I went out on the road with amazing. yes amazing amazing beautiful. amazing, amazing. beautiful so now what I want to ask you guys and I want you to give me both of you each two pieces of advice that you would give to aspiring artists Okay. Want to go first? Go ahead. Sure. Um, I would say, remember that you have to believe in yourself. It it, it takes such. Um, whew, it's 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 a. Remember that you're a work in progress, and it is about you know the journey. So remember, you talked about not happen. Things don't happen overnight, but there's such a connection in life when you have these little moments that are continuing you on your journey. Those are important. Don't stop. Don't stop believing in yourself when you hear no, when someone doesn't believe in your dream. You have the audacity to dream big. Yes, dream big. Don't stop. And um, and know that uh, with that dream, it comes, there comes some work. Because, you know, you can have the faith, but faith without work is dead. So you got to put in the time, uh, uh, you know, learn as much about your craft as you, as you can and put in the work. Uh, look at your favorite artists, go out, audition, get in choirs, do the things that are necessary so that you become great and better. You know, I'm still learning. It's still remember that as you as an artist, we continue to learn. And so uh, that's my advice. Don't give up. Yeah. Don't give up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say, um, and I uh, piggyback on what Sakai said, because I totally agree with all that she said, because that's important. And um, I think another important thing is not to compromise who you are 
as a person or an artist. You know, if it's meant for you, it would it, it's for you. If it's not, don't beat yourself up about it. Don't, you know, because trust and believe something better is going to happen for you. It's out there. It's, it's there. If it's meant for you, nobody can, you know, block your blessing but you. So, and so don't, don't, don't get, don't get in your way. Try not to get in your own way. You know, just keep learning your craft, like Zakai said. Secondly, I would say, um, be sure it's something you really want to do when it comes to music, because it's not, you know, it's not just singing. If you're going to sing, this other thing come with it, because with singing, you're going to have to perform. You know, don't want to sing and then be scared to get up there and sing in front of people, because that comes, that's all come with territory. You got to sing in front of people, and you just don't, be sure that's something you really want to do, because it's a, a lot goes into it. A lot goes into it. Mm -hmm. You guys have been so Amazing. This is going to be uh, an incredible learning experience for the up and coming talent because I see right now they're not being nurtured the way that you guys are mm -hmm. were when you were coming up. You know, they're just kind of thrown out there. And if it sticks, fine. And if it doesn't, oh well. And so to be able to have two experienced professionals sit down, take out the time to, to give some advice, I think I, I really appreciate it. I want you guys to know that. Mm -hmm. So Thank my you, last Kelly. question, my last question to you guys <laughs> is, how can people stay in touch with you for your upcoming music and videos? Where do they need to go? What do they need to do? Go ahead, Sakai. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So I know you're going to ask me this, and I should have <laughs> had all my stuff together. Okay. So we're on, on IG, Lift and Fatale. You can go there. Um, I believe it's L-E-S underscore F-E-M-M-E-S dot F-A-T-A-L-E-S. That's on IG. On, um, on Facebook, you can find us at Lift and Fatale. Our music page, it's the same thing, L-E-S, F-E-M-M-E-S, F-A-T-A-L-E-S, Lift and Fatale on Facebook. Please go to our YouTube page, yes. um, which is uh, Lift and Fatale. Look up question, is that enough? Listen to the song and the video. Subscribe to our channel. We're going to have some fun stuff happening there yeah. very soon. Share um, it. Well, share it. Like and share it. Yeah, <laughs> like and share. Thank you. <laughs> and um, and then you can find our music on all the streaming platforms as well. On yeah. iTunes and Spotify. And uh, let's see. Uh, oh, and please check out our, our website, which is lefemfatale.net, L-E-S-L-A-F-E-F-A-F-E-M-M-E-S-F-A-T-A-L-E-S.net, -E 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 lefemfatale.net. We have some fun stuff that we're going to be posting, um, but yeah. you get to, you know, see us and we'll be, um, as we continue to grow, we'll be uh, in touch a lot on that uh, website. And we're just excited. We're excited about all the things that are happening. So yes, you can find us on social media. Yeah. So and, thank and you, Kelly. We can mention too, I think we can mention we have a podcast that we're going to be presenting soon. So be looking out for that as well. Yeah. yeah. And you can Let's actually Talk. check. Yeah, it's called Let's Talk. And you can check out just a quick interview with Nikita and I. We're just kind of having a little fun with each other. And we tell a little bit of, uh, of, of of our journey, yeah. um, there's one posted. It's just a little preview, so yeah. check it out. But there's more yes. to come. More is coming on that. Yeah, I am definitely thrilled, and just know that in this particular podcast, all of your information will be there. Okay. Thank so, you so, so much. Thank you. Well, look, I, 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 I'm glad I can remember it, Kelly, because I said, <laughs> "Oh, well, she's just gonna post it." But, yeah, no, but I definitely, I definitely will be posting it. Yes. Yeah. So again, yes. I want to thank you, ladies, for joining me on Straight Talking with Kelly, where real conversations happen. And I cannot wait to see that video. Oh, wonderful. Kelly, it's I have to say soon. again, it's a pleasure meeting you. Yes, you are very, you're very beautiful. And I love that. I love that wall back there. That's gorgeous. That's thank gorgeous. you, ma'am. I appreciate it. That's yeah. Appreciate thank it. you, Kelly, for everything. You're such a, just an inspiration on so many levels. Um, and I just appreciate you having us on and just being a part of my village. And it's just amazing to be here today and talk to you and share. Thank you so much, honey. I appreciate it. Give my love to Kevin and the kids, okay? Well, they're not kids anymore, so. 
14, <laughs> Kelly, 14. Wow, I know, crazy. can you believe that? It's like, no, I'm, no, I'm, no. And and I'll be like, look, just, no, I won't, I won't say it. I won't say it. So but what, I'll when be like, uh, 14, is over. they are 14 and teenagers. Let's just, <laughs> yeah, well, see, I, I love, it. but it, it's been a joy being home though. I must say being on the yeah. road for seven years straight. It's been a joy to be home with family. So I, I, I do appreciate it. Yeah. And I love my babies, but they teenagers. Oh, quite, I'm just saying. <laughs> well, you know, I have a teenage granddaughter, so I know. <laughs> and she's so cute. Oh, she's beautiful. Girl, but you know, she, she can give me that look like, you know, <laughs> oh. doing too much. <laughs> so, I, you know, I, I, and all I, I do is I remember when I was a teenager and that's how I get through it with her. Because yeah. we were yeah. just like that. You know, yeah. we always say these kids are so, they're no different from what we really are. It's so, so true. It's so not. true. Well, ladies, when yeah. COVID is over and finally out of our mist, I don't know if it'll ever really be out of yeah. the mist, but yeah. we will get to some type of normality. Yeah. We'll get together, okay? That'd be great. I would love to. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Definitely. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Kelly. And you also, thank you for listening. Thank okay. you so much. Bye. Bye. Blessings. Blessings. <laughs> Bye. -bye.